That's taken far too long, but it's done. Hi, I'm Tangles. This is my garage, and this is my car. So, an hour later, in a bit, uh, the bar looks good on the whole. It's, it's decent, I'm happy with it. Just gonna give it a gentle rub down with some 800 grit, remove any impurities or dust that might have landed on the paint while it was drying or anything like that. It'll show up any other imperfections, if there are any, but I think I've got them all. And then put the base coat on. Now let's turn up the right way. Let's see that easy. Let's try and scratch it. Peeps. Okay, she's ready for clear coat. Turn this off because I don't want dust lying around. I'll take this over there. Uh, and when I say clear coat, I mean base color. Clear. Okay, so you may notice that door behind me is closed and it's dark in here. It's because both doors are closed. Because the wind's picked up. You can't spray paint in the wind. So it's hot in here. I'm only going to be able to put the coat on and then I'll have to leave because it's going to get all fumey. Um, it's disappointing, but I'd rather have a good finish than not. I suppose this is the other option. Let's uh, see how we go. So I've got a light here. Now what I'm doing here is from the back side I'm going to spray all these openings first from the back side um, just to make sure that, the, that they're fully painted so as when it's on the car you don't sort of see the primer towards the back if you're looking closely. I'll do the underside here first. Let's get in here. I don't have my doubts about the coverage, but I already sort of had some doubts actually. But uh, going through it fairly quickly here. Okay, so this is the back side sorted, and I'm pretty much all the way through the can already. So I don't think I've got much hope of doing this with blue pan. So, I'll get these areas done if I can. One thing down. I have to go out because it's too thin in here. Good time being, we'll be back shortly to uh, get the rest of this coat on. Two cans, not going to be even close to enough. Man, it is hot as fuck in here. Just trying to make sure I get one nice even coat on the whole thing. That's about all I can manage in the moment. The tin's almost empty, but it's just getting too fumey, so I don't want to risk it. All right, so had a couple of wet, windy days in a row, so um, I haven't been able to actually go any further with this. I've got the paint, so I'm going to go further with it now. Um, just got to wipe the dust off this because it's set for a couple of days. I'm using my clothes horse as a, as a some sort of tool. Should work pretty well. As you can see, I've, I've painted the floor around the cardboard box I had on the ground. Um, it'll come up pretty easy, but to save me uh, having to do more work to fix it. I've got two more tins of base coat. Um, if you look very close, there's areas that haven't quite covered entirely or cleanly. I might get away with one more tin, but I figure I might as well just use the extra two and be done with it. Obviously doing this on the clothes horse, the clothes horse is going to get painted, but to me that doesn't matter. If you want to keep your clothes horse, they don't want to pay $5 for a new one. Don't use it. 
More light would be really good, but get over that. Can done. Okay, last light coat. Concentrating on the top side here because that's the bit you can see the most. Then the, the sort of the front of the other side. I'm reasonably happy with the bar overall, except because the universe hates my guts. There's this blemish here, which from 10 minutes worth of research appears to be what they call a fish eye, which means there's some sort of contaminant there, which meant the paint it didn't want to stick there and it's run to the areas around it. I don't know how I got contaminant there. Didn't have it before I cleaned it with wax and grease remover. Um, there was a faint thing there before I started painting, but there's a faint thing next to it too, which you can't even see in the camera. Um, you know, there's faint blemishes that are in the bar that you can see if you look very, very closely, but I'm you know, okay with that because you're not looking very, very closely at it. And it's much better than it was. Um, but that I can see from the other side of the room. And the way to get that off is to sand it out, unfortunately. So I've got to sand it again after finishing. Thankfully, I did keep a little bit of that base coat colour, so I could just paint this area, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, more delays, more pain in the ass. Um, the Google machine says sand it with 2000 grit wet and dry, which I do have right here. Wet. Wet sand it. So that's what I'm going to try and see if I can just get it out, dry it, wax and grease remove it, and then paint that area. Well, after all that effort, I've had to go right through the paint. Um, this the top coat, this is the primer, and there seems to be something in the plastic there, maybe. So, there's not much I can do about it. I've just rubbed it back with 2000 grit. Uh, very gently, just trying to get through the. Um, I don't know if it shows up in here. There's like a. I don't know if you see it. There's almost like a fingerprint type of deal happening there, uh, which is what you could see through the paint. But maybe this is just be enough to get rid of it. Maybe won't come through now. I hope. Um, I'm just going to gently sand the little area here. Um, put. Finish the coats of primer on to try and get that area and then top coat all that. Well, in an effort to remove the blemish, I've had to go pretty hardcore on it. I've had to remove all this paint. Um, so, last thing I did was, I think on camera, I did the 2000 grit and then tried a, a bit of primer. Didn't work. So, I've had to, I've gone down all the way down to 400, gotten rid of all of the issue. And then some 800 over the area, and I've used the, the 1500 wet and dry to remove some of this overspray paint. Um, I did a, another bit of primer just with um, brush touch, which I'm going to do again now. So I'm just going to brush the primer onto that area to stop overspraying everywhere. Okay, so before I sand this away and do it all again and again, I don't know if you can see. This ring here. So this is what I had before when it was much smaller. Now my googling said it was contaminants. Wash it better. But now I'm thinking it was actually because it's doing it again. It's doing it at the edge of the primer again. I'm thinking it's actually the wax and grease remover getting under the edge of the primer and um, starting to lift it. So I'm going to do it again. This time I'm not going to use a wax and grease remover. And I'll prime it again. It's easy to tell dark out so it's getting late so I've literally just hit that with some 400 grit um, I hope my hypothesis is right I'm just going to clean it with a rag and try the primer again so dry clean rag no fluids no solvents nothing so in an act of desperation to remove whatever it is 
that's causing that. I've, I've done like three more attempts with getting rougher and rougher sandpaper and sanding a larger and larger area. It's just not working. I keep, just, no matter what I do, I, the ring just gets bigger and bigger with whatever layer it is. I don't know if it's the original primer to the original paint or or what, or the original primer to the original plastic. It's sort of it's hard to tell when the layers are so thin. Or even my primer over that stuff. It's just not working. You just the ring gets bigger and bigger the more I sand. So I'm putting some bog down in the hope that I can leave a little bit of the bog there and then I can prime over that and and then finish painting it. That's the plan. I don't know if that'll work. I'm pretty pissed off. I was pretty close to finishing this. Um, but now I've also got friggin' primer over spray everywhere too. I'm gonna have to, so I'm gonna have to wet sand sort of all that with some 2000 grit to make sure I get all the overspray off before I then sort of you know paint that and then give all of that a bit of a general spray to make sure that it's all covered and all clear all the same thickness and then and then finally put the clear on it okay well I can't do any more than this uh, I've filled the area where whatever it was was um, and I'm, obviously I've got to reprime all this area uh, I do need, I can just feel the edge there, I do need a little, little bit more sanding, uh, some fine sanding just to make sure I don't have any raised edges here, but the uh, primer will be going on shortly. Okay, well that's the heavy layer of primer on, and instantly you can see that um, the blemish is gone, so I've got to let that dry, give that a sand, and then top coat the whole bar, or this whole area. And clear cut the bar and I'm done. What repair? Can't even see it. So that's one coat of base and of sort of blended all the way around sort of this half of the bar. Uh, it'll need a second coat at least. Oh, damn it, I saw a piece of dust just land right there and another one there. I'll stop moving around. Um, once that's dried adequately I'll put a second coat on it. And once that's dried, it's ready for clear. Then I can put it on the bar and then I can do some other stuff other than painting. Okay, so 40 minutes drying time on this, clear goes on. So in 40 minutes, I'll have a coat of clear on. 40 minutes after that, I'll have another coat of clear on. 40 minutes after that, I'll probably put a third coat on, I'm not sure. We'll see how I'm going. Uh, but the important thing is, base color is done, finally. Should have been done a week ago. Should have at least been done yesterday before that thing turned up. But sorted now, so all good. Just um, let that sit for 40 minutes. Put the clear on. All right then. Let's do this. Coat of clear done, that's about 90% of the can, so I'm glad I bought three cans because I think it'll need three coats. Round 386. The tin done, it was just enough to do all the edge chips again. So now I can just concentrate on the bulk. Two on. Over 20 minutes. Coat through, go on. Time for coat number three. Okay, that's coat number three. I'll put a fourth one on. Got plenty of paint. I was a bit more aggressive with that one, put it up a bit heavier. Uh, because I knew I had plenty of paint. And I want the finish, is that just light reflecting on my face? It's odd. Well, here's coat number four. Okay, that's the fourth coat. I got a little bit close with the nozzle in one spot there, so I'm gonna let that dry for 20 minutes. 
See, I might need to put another coat on it just to blend where I put slightly thicker clear in one spot. Um, it didn't run, so hopefully it'll just blend out. But if not, then another coat should fix it. Looks like that little area has sorted itself out, but I will put one more coat on it because why not? That's fairly thin coat. Done! Give that an hour or so to set before I move it. Bring my car in. Put it over there. Fit it tomorrow afternoon after work. Time to see if the bar is the same colour as the car. And bowl it along. And if it's not, stiff shit. It's whatever colour it is. Everything I own is covered in friggin' dust. From sanding, bog, and paint. match really. Same colour but it's like a different shade. I don't know if it's that obvious on the camera it might be. It's almost like this is matte-ish in finish. This is glossier. Maybe the clear's not good enough or maybe there's not enough of it but it's supposed to be a high, high gloss acrylic clear which is supposed to be what you use. Unless I've got that wrong. Give a chance I got that wrong. It's on there now, that's what it is. So yeah, job done.